Hello and welcome to back to chapter 8 notes and so in this one this video will cover cost plus pricing and target costing and some other topics that comprise chapter 8 so let's talk about cost plus pricing <clears throat> so cost plus pricing could be used to uh, get around problems with estimating demand functions um, yes and no you still have to estimate the markup as we'll see so I don't know if you can fully get around that problem I think it alleviates the problem somewhat. So we'll say that. We'll soften that goal. Uh, with cost plus pricing, the company starts with an estimate of full cost. And remember that what we mean by full cost is variable cost plus fixed cost pushed down to the unit level. And then what we'll do is we'll add a markup. So basing the markup on full cost gets us to, as opposed to only variable cost, lets us recover all of our costs. And so that's, of course, what we would want to do. So if you look at this example, we have our company, LDR Manufacturing, is thinking about making is the production of a new laser disc reader. Estimated unit variable costs are $60, and the annual fixed cost would be $120,000. The unit price would be equal to the cost, the cost plus a 25% markup. What would be the full cost per unit and the unit sales price be if we are assumed to sell 1,000 units? So the first thing that we actually have to do with cost plus pricing is we have to push our fixed costs down to the unit level. So in order to do that, we have to say, well, how many units are we going to make? And so, of course, then that involves us estimating how many units are we going to sell. So that, of course, does get into estimating the demand function. Okay. Um, so if we look over here, we can. the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate out full cost. I'm going to say my variable cost per unit, which is $60, we see. And then I'm going to write out my fixed costs. I'm going to calculate out my fixed cost per unit by taking my $120,000 divided by my 1,000 units, which gives me 120. Then, of course, what I can do from there is that I can add in those two, add those two, and that gives me my full cost of 180. And I can say plus my markup, which is equal to 25%. So I can multiply 180 times 0.25, which gives me 45. And then I can say my sales price would then be equal to, give me a second here, my sales price would then be equal to my 180 plus my 45, which is equal to my 225, and that would be my sales price. Okay. Um, study abroad at Mary Washington. I've done some study abroad before, and they work in a similar fashion. So well, what happened is that I have to, the way it works with the study abroad, for example, is that we put on a, uh, a fee onto each student, which covers my hotel costs and my airfare and my meals. I know, rough deal. Um, and so what I actually have to do in order to price it out, when I advertise the price to students, I have to say, well, how many students do I think I'm going to bring? So let's say, for example, that I think I'm going to have three thousand dollars. You don't need to write this down. Just listen. Three thousand dollars of cost for me to bring a study abroad over to England, and that will include my hotels and, and airfare and meals for one week. And I say, okay. I divide that by ten. I think I'm going to have ten students. So then, of course, what I would do is I would add three hundred dollars onto each student. Cut off a little bit there. Three hundred dollars onto each student fee problem comes in is what if I only have five well this goes up or I have to or I have to pay some for some of it myself okay so this is kind of the problem that we have with fixed cost pricing in a way that it can be a little bit circular okay that we can run into these issues with, with fixed cost pricing if we don't estimate this correctly you have to be really good about estimating this pretty correctly otherwise the fixed costs our, our sales price per unit may not cover all of our fixed costs. Okay, the same thing here. If I don't estimate this right, and I only have five, well then what's going to happen, right, is that everybody has to pay a larger share, or I just have to pay for some of it myself. Then where your company, um, your company probably could look at it, I guess, halfway through and say, well, gee, we need to raise our sales price, or they just take a loss. Well, we don't have to. We don't want to take a loss. So we have to make sure that we estimate this denominator, or how many units we think we're going to make, uh, pretty accurately. 
And so if we were to look at this, if we were to look at the second leg over here, assume that sales are only 800 units, what are the full costs and then the unit sales costs? And so why don't you take a second and do part B, okay? Uh, go ahead and pause the video and we'll come back. All right, well, welcome back. So we'll come over here and we'll say our variable cost is still 60. In this case, our fixed cost per unit is equal to our 120,000 divided by 800, or 150 per unit. That gives us our full cost of our 210, and then our markup is still assume 25% again, 52.5, which means our price is now our 262.5. But what happens, right, is when the price goes up, what happens to the quantity demand? What's going to go down? So this is the exact same thing. I've ran into the same problem with study abroad. So if I make the price too high, then the denominator is not good. I'm not going to get enough people in the, in the uh, study abroad, which means I won't be able to cover my costs. Okay? Or I just won't be able to get enough people anyways to go. So I have the exact same issue with study abroad. So we look over here and we can discuss the problem with, with estimating uh, the demand. We can say, Overall, I'll just kind of discuss this. I'll say lower demand uh, can lead to higher product costs, okay? And then that can then, and that's what I'm saying over here, lower demand, right over here at the 800, leads to higher product costs because the fixed cost is spread out over fewer units, which increases our full cost. And then our markup is also higher, which then pushes our, pushes our price higher. But then the higher prices can, can then lead to lower demand. And that's some of the circular problems that you can have with cost plus price, okay? So I guess the key takeaway message is you have to be able to estimate that, estimate how many units you get there and sell uh, pretty accurately, okay? So when we talk about some advantages over here to cost plus pricing, the first thing that we can say could be easy to apply, uh, and then the company can earn reasonable profit if they have a sufficient quantity that can be sold at that specified price. Uh, disadvantages, well, choosing the market can be can be difficult. And then here's where I talked about just a second ago about that cost price pricing is inherently circular. You first have to estimate the demand, which is the quantity sold, to estimate the calculate the fixed overhead per unit. Okay, and so we have to put down that fixed overhead in order to obtain the price because we want to cost it out of full cost, so we can make sure that we have to charge a higher high enough price to cover our full cost. However, the quantity demanded is less than anticipated. Fixed cost per unit will be higher, okay? And then the higher fixed cost, the result will result in a, result in a higher fixed, higher cost per unit, okay? And so the next time when we do it, we say, well, we didn't sell a thousand, right? Let's estimate it only eight hundred. Well, then you run into the same problem that you have to spread those fixed costs over few, few units, which then raises the price. The price goes up, and the quantity demanded goes. All right, so let's talk about target costing now. So if you come over here, this is the next topic that we have is our target costing. You can say once a new product is designed, as in the uh, features are specified and detailed engineering plans have been made, uh, it can be in manufacturing the product is ready to go. It might be difficult to make changes that can reduce costs. So basically, your switching costs can be pretty high. Okay? To address these difficulties, companies have used target costing. Target costing is an integrated approach to determine product features, product price, product cost, product design, so we can earn a reasonable profit. So with target costing, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to analyze some of our competing products, and target costing would be a cross-functional endeavor okay, uh, between engineering, marketing, and, and accounting. And so by doing this, this can lead to a specification of deep features and then price that would be attractive to customers. And then we're going to determine our target price. What price do, do we think customers will pay? How can we determine that from focus groups and other market research efforts? Uh, the second step would be then to, well, what's our profit level? So if we know we have a price of $100 and we want to have a profit margin of 20% with $20, we need to be able to manufacture um, our, our product for 80 bucks. Again, let's assume the price is 100 in a, pot, in a profit margin of 20% uh, for that product. That means we have to then figure out a way to make that product for $80, okay? And that's what I'm saying over here. Then the after we develop that specified level of profit, the engineering department, with input from the cost accounting, 
develop a design that can be produced at a cost that would earn that desired level of profit. So when we look at our here, our target cost being equal to, um, we can say the specified product pe features and price, okay, minus, I, that's a typo, minus the desired profit. Okay, so we say our price minus our desired profit would be equal to our target cost, okay? And that's what I'm saying right over here as a typo. So the first thing again, going back through, we'll specify the features in the price, determine that that's the desired profit, and then we say, uh, we're going to then say, all right, can we make it for that cost? And if we can't, you either need to change the price, or we need to change the features, or we need to change what our desired profit margin is, and then we're going to design it so then we can there, then try to get to that target cost. So we look over here with our example of our low country bikes. Let's walk through this example. It's developing a new terrain, a new all terrain bike uh, that includes carbon fiber uh, frame, lightweight uh, tensile steel. Sorry about this. I'm just going to move this going so. Okay. Uh, airless foam rubber tires and air shocks on the wheels and on the seat. The company's cross functional team thinks that the bike can be sold for $2,500 and the company desires a 20% profit margin. So here's the price, here's the profit margin. We can back in to then figure out the target cost and then say, all right, is that something that we can do? Uh, the second question that we have is if unit variable costs are $1,200 and total fixed costs of $2 million, how many bikes do we need to produce and sell in order to achieve the target cost per bike? Okay, that's the second question that we have. So let's look at part A. Let's see our price, right, is equal to our $2,500. And then we'll say less our required profit, which is equal to our $2,500 times 0.2, which gives us $500. That means the target cost will therefore be equal to $2,000. And of course, if we can't make it for $2,000, then we need to either change the price, the profit margin, or the features that are that are in the bike. Okay? The second question asks, how many bikes do we have to be able to achieve this target cost per bike? So what we can say over here is we can say our target cost okay, per bike equals our $2,000 minus our variable cost per unit, which is equal to $1,200, which is given on your prior page. If you look back in your prior, prior page, it says if the unit variable costs are $1,200, okay? Means that our fixed costs, if I subtract that two, if I subtract those two, then the fixed cost must be equal to $800 per bike. So then what I can do is I can I take my total fixed cost of $2 million, which is given to me on the prior page, and divide that by the $800 per bike, which would mean I'd have to do 2,500 bucks right there, okay? So I'd have to sell 2,500 bucks, okay? Another way to view this is, a, is as a target uh, profit problem. And so I'll show you exactly what I did over here if I view this. As a target profit problem, I can say I want profit to be 20% of sales. And as a unit basis, then that would be $500. So I can put this into the profit equation. I can say 500, remember the profit equation equals profit. Uh, profit equals our price minus our variable cost minus our fixed cost. And I can say our total profit, which would be our price times our quantity that we sell, equals our, our, our total profit per per bike, I'm sorry, times the quantity that we would sell would be equal to the total profit, it's a profit margin, profit per bike, times the number of bikes, would equal to our price per bike times the quantity we sold, which would be our total revenue, minus my variable cost per bike, times the total number of bikes, would equal my total variable cost, minus my total fixed costs, okay? And I can do algebra to solve for Q. So I can say I have my 500 Q, equals therefore I subtract these two and I get 1300Q minus $2 million. That gives me 800Q. And then I take my total $2 million divided by the 800Q 
must equal 2,500 bytes.